<clears throat> Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Show. My thank you, everyone, all, all y'all, every one of y'all who jumped in on the live last night, spur of the moment. Ben Daniel from the Ben Daniel podcast jumps in with me. He was in the viewer group and people were saying, bring on Ben so we can get this thing done right. Hey, Ben is my boy. Love having him on there. It's a lot of fun when we get in the mix of talking any sport, but obviously the WNBA is the thing that we still talk about. Um, Great, great thing. We got up to, we got, our peak was 584 viewers. We were over 500 for about a good hour. So we thank you. I thank you personally for jumping on with us last night. That was dope, dope, dope. It was an awesome time. It's funny how when you look at what we talked about, we even included a conversation about Indiana Fever General Manager Lynn Dunn and talking about the things that she said, which we were actually impressed by. <clears throat> you know, she she made some comments about what they're trying to do. We're going to run, 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 blah, blah, blah. And in less than 24 hours, heck, 24, less than 12 hours, Lynn Dunn has been demoted from general manager to senior advisor. I don't know what the hell a senior advisor is. I guess it's one step higher than hot dog concessions manager as the new Indiana Fever president, Kelly Crosscup, has w- wasted no time at all. No time at all in making a move to replace Lynn Dunn with a- Amber Cox. She is the new chief operating officer and general manager <clears throat> for the Indiana Fever. This is a big, big move. It shows they're going in a completely different direction. They're making changes. They want to win. And uh, yeah, you've know you got Amber Cox, who was previously, <clears throat> excuse me, she was previously a uh, chief operating officer of the Dallas Wings, led day to day operations, oversaw ticket sales, partnerships, marketing, communications, broadcast, community efforts. The Wings were establishing the, the best mar- franchise best marks amongst key business metrics. Yeah, fifth, and before that, she was with the Connecticut Sun as the vice president for sports for five, five, six years. She's about business. She's about that business. You want to know what that business is? That business is the business of winning. The business of winning. She's coming here to make some changes. You can bet your Rudy Pooh candy ass that Christy Sides will not be the head coach inside of the next two weeks. In fact, I'd venture to guess she's probably fired in the next few days if she hasn't already been fired and it hasn't been announced yet. There's no way president hires a new GM, COO, And doesn't, and that GM is not replacing the head coach. It's how it rolls in professional sports. The GM wants to, a GM wants his or her person in that spot. So when you try to blame at the end of the day, you want to blame me? Well, you blame me for decisions that I made, not decisions that were made before me, decisions that I had, that I inherited. So I'm going to clean the plate. I'm going to cut ties. I want my person in there. I don't want a previous person in there. I saw what happened. I saw what went on. I saw the deficiencies within this franchise. I saw what Caitlin Clark had to go through. It was in your face. It was absolutely in your face. And think about the fact that Dallas Wings have one of the most sought-after free agents in the WNBA named Satu Sabali. She was the person in charge for the Dallas Wings. Do you think she's going to go after her? 
I would venture to guess that would be a key target for Amber Cox. And she's also now going to be obviously in charge of making sure that Kelsey Mitchell doesn't go anywhere. So cut her a check. Amber Cox has a challenge on her hands. She has to make it happen now. She has to bring in some pieces to help win. She has to bring in pieces to help get this team from a 20 and 20, 500 team and get them to that next level. She needs to surround Caitlin Clark with what Caitlin Clark needs to be successful, whether that's in free agency, trades, draft, whatever that is. You need complimentary pieces around Caitlin Clark. You need some bench performers, people that can come off the bench and not have Caitlin Clark having to play 40 minutes damn near every game because you can't rely on someone to at least stem tide while she breathes for two or three or five minutes. That's the reality here. But this is a massive move for the Indiana Fever. They waste no time. Lynn Dunn is now a senior advisor. Again, I don't know what the hell that is. And, I mean, I have a feeling that Christy Sizes is going to be out the door real soon herself. At the same time, you have a situation here. Is Christy Sizes going to get completely fired? Because Lynn Dunn didn't get completely fired. She's got just got demoted to senior retiree. And Christy Sizes obviously probably wants to coach somewhere in, in, in the WNBA. It won't be in Indiana. So her demotion would be the like head of hot dog concessions. I have no idea. I'm obviously trying to make a joke, but there's no way she's – I cannot possibly see any which way in which Christy Sides is retained as head coach. And I'll tell you something else. <clears throat> her reaction to Caitlin Clark winning Rookie of the Year when they do these little videos, not exactly the greatest reaction if you ask me. Not the greatest reaction. Take a look at this response to Aaliyah Boston winning WNBA Rookie of the Year last year to her response to Caitlin Clark winning it this year. Aaliyah Boston, you are amazing. Congratulations. Um, what an amazing thing for you and for our franchise, you being Rookie of the Year. Um, everything you've done for us, you've made us better. You're going to continue to make us better. Um, but congrats. So, so proud of you. You deserve every bit of that. Lynn, just wanted to say congratulations on Rookie of the Year. Uh, you've worked extremely hard uh, to get this and to earn this award. Congratulations. My God. That is the difference of being excited, ecstatic, a glow on your face to looking semi-depressed, resigned, and acceptance that, you know what? I wanted to do things a certain way, but realistically, I couldn't because of Caitlin Clark. You mean win? Because that's what Caitlin Clark got you was wins. She took a 13 and 27 team and brought them to 20 and 20. Probably should have been 24 and 16, if not for your horrendous coaching for most of the season. But that looks like a depressed human being who's mad or just like whatever. And I have I, I posted it on Twitter and, and I got a response from someone who says, oh, well, she looks like she was preparing for a game last year. She was relaxed. Mm-mm. Nah, nah. You just coach the art, in my opinion, the greatest rookie in the history of basketball, in WNBA basketball. And as far as I'm concerned, the best player in the history of the WNBA at this point. She's done things that have never been done. She's done things that – she's a first for damn near every category there is. She's a first for categories that will never have a second in the WNBA. She's a first for categories that will never have a second. She's going to break records that have taken 20 years to be set, and she's going to break them in, in, in 18 months. She did things that have never been done, will never be done again. There's no player like her in college. Not anytime soon. And you look like your dog died. I don't care if they were potentially preparing for a game. I don't know when that video was recorded. But I know this. I saw a person who was dead in her eyes, who looks worn the hell out, 
and she's worn the hell out because she refused to embrace greatness. There are coaches that come around in this world that want to be the one that put the freaking stamp, the stamp of approval on a paper. Even though their stamp isn't worth dog doo-doo. So, for example, you have a coach, the best, you have a coach who wants to do it this way, who's always done it this way. The fact of the matter is Christy Sides has only been a head coach for a year at this level. I think she was an assistant. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not sure. I mean, let me check. Let me check her. I don't think she's ever been a head coach before Indiana. <clears throat> she's never been a head coach. She hell, She's never been a head coach in high school. She was an assistant in high school, assistant in college, assistant here, assistant there. Always been an assistant. So this was her first head coaching job, and she had in her she had created in her mind that she was going to be the person that led this team, and that's great. And all part of being a leader is knowing how to adjust to what your what your weapons are, who your who your your key people are. The way you treat A is not how you treat B. The way you treat B is not how you treat C. The way you treat C is not how you treat D. And if you go, I mean, my gosh, there's no one better that can show you this than Don Shula, who coached the Miami Dolphins for a gazillion years. Don Shula was a run first coach for the majority of his career. And then some guy named Dan Marino came along. Dan Marino shows up and magically the Dolphins go from being run, 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 Zonka, Mercury Morris, Jim Kick, to we're going to air this bad boy out. We have a gunslinger in Dan Marino. Unfortunately, they never provided Marino with any kind of defense, and he never had a decent running game because you still need to run the ball a little bit in the NFL to win. But they aired it out, and Dan Marino set record after record after record. Now a lot of his records have since been broken because the league is so pass happy now that even what he did was not anywhere near what's been done now because if Dan Marino played today, he'd be break, he would probably throw for 7,000 yards in a season because it's just – it's powder puff football. But Don Shula adjusted to the type of talent he had on his team. And Christy Sides was incapable of doing that. A person who walks around as a defensive specialist. That's her supposed job, defensive specialist. I'm a defensive coach. Their defense was absolutely horrendous. If it wasn't the worst defense in the WNBA, it was right there. It was close to the bottom. And I can confirm real fast if it was the worst or not. But if it wasn't, it was really close to the bottom in defense. Because defensively, they were awful. They were flat out terrible. <clears throat> Let's see here. Defensive points, opponents, point, points per game. The only team worse than the Indiana Fever defensively this season was the Dallas Wings. Indiana Fever were the 11th out of 12 in defense in the WNBA. At the same time, they were third offensively, yet still at a minus 2.7 from points scored to points uh, given up per game. So your calling card is defense. You were incapable of putting together any type of defensive scheme to mask, hide your team's defensive inability and deficiencies. There are no great defensive players on the Indiana Fever. Lexi Hall's a good one. To me, in fact, Benley's a good one, but the majority, the rest of them, Erica Wheeler's a pretty good one. The rest of them couldn't defend a park car, and that includes Caitlin Clark, Kelsey Mitchell, Aaliyah Boston, Melissa Smith, Katie Lou Samuelson. They could not, uh, uh, Don, the Damaris Dantes, they could not defend anything. And you were unable to to scheme anything to protect them. You never played zone all season. That's literally why people play zone. Protect in a bad defense, bad on ball defenders. They're not good on ball defenders. You don't have a lockdown guard defensive player in your starting lineup. There's not one. You don't even have one that's remotely close to being a lockdown defender, but yet you're going to have you're going to play man to man all season long. Play zone, mix it up, do things differently. That's your job, and she could not do that. It wasn't until seemingly close to the about I think game fifteen or so, where she they finally sat Christy Wallace down. Finally. They finally, later in the season, got Lexi Hull in the starting lineup. Finally. 
You had players that you never knew what they could do because they sat the whole season, but yet a player like Christy Wallace, who started like the first 15 games and then became an invisible person until the last game of the season where she scored, I think, 17 points in a meaningless game. But Christy Wallace, I'm sorry, Christy Sides failed. She failed. And she is going to be on, she's next. Lynn Dunn is gone. Is, Lynn Dunn was demoted. Whatever she's going to be doing, who the hell cares? I mean, I think Lynn Dunn's, I don't even know how old Lynn Dunn. She's probably in her 70s, I presume. But Christy Sides is done. If she's not done, oh, my God. I, it would be the most flabbergasting, flabbergasting thing to see if Christy Sides is not gone in the next two weeks max. No way. It's it, I just cannot possibly see. You already seen you already seen 25% of the WNBA head coaches getting fired already. It was LA, Atlanta, uh, and one more got fired already. There were three coaches that were already fired. Oh, and and and, and Weatherspoon in Chicago. Chrissy Sides is probably gonna be the fourth. And if she's not, this might come down to Caitlin Clark. This might come down to Caitlin Clark's stamp of approval. Does Caitlin Clark want to have her back? If Christy Sides comes back next year, it's because Caitlin Clark said yes. It's because Caitlin Clark stood up for Christy Sides. Because otherwise, she's out the door. And if they don't ask Caitlin Clark, which would be kind of dumb considering she's your franchise player, then – She's gone. But I, 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 I have a hard time buying that. I think that I, I don't know what their relationship was. It didn't seem like it was the greatest. But Caitlin Clark is a get along. She gets along. She's she doesn't need the she doesn't want the drama. She doesn't want the headache. She you never heard her say a negative word about anybody, despite she being being attacked all season. The Indiana Fever though are going in a different direction. They're not playing that crap. And I cannot possibly see Amber Cox retaining Christy Sides because no GM wants to go down because of a coach that they did not hire. So we shall see what happens. But Lynn Dunn, da na 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 na, hey hey hey, goodbye. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Pound that like button, ring that bell. Make sure you get all of our updates. And thank you again to all you who jumped in with us last night. Remember, we're jumping on tomorrow at 6.30. Yankees, Royals, baseball. Come on now.